Hi guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 13 of Practical Drupal Development. I know that we were supposed to talk about taxonomy today, but we're going to sidetrack here a little bit because we need to set up a WYSIWYG editor for our uh, text areas of our content types. If we go and click edit here first, we'll see that all we have right now is this just kind of plain old boring text area. And we had talked about adding some like options at the top to, to make it bold and italics and change the font styles and all that stuff. So we're going to do that real quick before we start adding a whole lot of content to this site so that we have a little bit more freedom with it. Um, there's a module that we need to download in order to do that, which is the WYSIWYG module. Um, I'll include a link to this module in the description as usual. So go ahead and download this and extract it into Sites All Modules. Head back over to your site and turn it on. Now, if we head up to Configuration here and go to Content Authoring and WYSIWYG Profiles, you're going to see that we're not getting any options here. We're just being told to download a plugin library. And that is because all the WYSIWYG module does is bridges the gap between Drupal and a third-party plugin. So we need to get one of those third-party plugins. Now you can scroll through here and download and use whichever one you want. However, I'm going to be downloading the CK Editor here because it's the one that I'm the most familiar with and it's the one that I actually like to use a lot. Um, if you click download on it, it will take you to this page here. Now, I have noticed a bug with this module. If you download the latest version of the CK Editor, it will not work. Um, I don't know why. I haven't really investigated much into it yet. But if you come to the previous version and download the 3.6 version of the CK Editor files, it will work just fine. So go ahead and download those. Now, that needs to be extracted to a specific path on the back end of our site, which is Sites All Libraries CK Editor and then the ckeditor.js file. Now, this is the usual standard for all of the module of uh, third party plugins that we download. So, let's head back to where we have downloaded that and also to our libraries folder here. Now, if we just drag and drop this folder over here, this module plugin will not work. And that's because it doesn't follow the path that it required us to have here. What we need to do is open up this folder and drag this CK editor folder over into our libraries here. And that's it. Uh, we just can't drag that first folder because it doesn't comply with the file path that CK editor requires. So just grab the one inside. If we refresh this now, you'll see that we have some options here for our profiles. Now these are different text formats and they are stored somewhere else on Drupal and we do need to talk about those real quick. If we go up to configuration, content, authoring, and text formats, you'll see that Drupal has already supplied us with three. It's plain text, full HTML, and filtered HTML. Now these function all differently. The plain text option uh, will not really allow you to do much of anything other than add text. It doesn't accept any kind of HTML tags. Um, if you insert them, it's actually going to print them out on the page. So if you put a paragraph tag in, you'll see the paragraph tag when you click save. So it doesn't accept any kind of HTML, it's just plain text. The next option up from that as far as capabilities is the filtered HTML. Now the filtered HTML option does allow you to insert certain HTML tags, however it will strip out any others. And if you click configure on this, it will allow you to choose which tags you want to be able to display. This is kind of a security measure that keeps people from injecting any kind of HTML, JavaScript, or anything like that that could potentially be harmful to your website or things that you just don't want people to post. If you don't want them to be able to place iframes in with videos because that's going to slow down the load time of your site, that keeps somebody from putting 80 to 90 videos in a single comment on your website, which will 
pretty much slow your website down to a point where people can't really view it. Um, and then the next option is the full HTML option, which will accept all HTML. Um, there's no limits to it. People can insert whatever they want. Now, as you can see, we'll talk about roles here a little later when we talk about users, but uh, this is only set up for site administrators. This does not allow your average site user, someone who is not logged into this site, to use this profile, which is usually a pretty safe measure because your site administrators, the people working on the site and building the site, are not going to really intentionally do anything harmful to the website. Um, now there is one thing that I do want to do in here before we bounce out, and that is just click this little handle and move this up. What that's going to do for us as site administrators is make the full HTML option the first one that comes up in the list. That way we don't have to select it, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. All right, so that's all on this section here. If we come up to content or configuration again, content authoring and WYSIWYG profiles, you will see that they have flipped here as well. Now, we need to select an editor for this particular text format. Now, you can create other text formats, so you might have a filtered HTML for you know the average user and then a filtered HTML for the logged in user who you might trust a little more. So you can select different profiles for this. You can also download multiple uh, third party editors that we had from that previous page. If you click this installation instructions here, you will get this list of blue options again and you can download multiple editors and you can see here that CK editor has been downloaded. The green means it's been successful. So you can have maybe CK editor here for this one and this epic editor maybe for this one. You can play around with it if you'd like. But for now we are going to select CK editor for our full HTML and click save. And then if we click edit here and this buttons and plugins, you're going to see that we have this whole long list of options here. Now these are the options that will be available when a user uses full HTML. Also a reason that we may want to set up multiple text formats. We may want one to only be able to use bold, italics, and underline, while we might have a site developer who has access to all of these different options. Um, we're just going to go through here and turn on a few of these, um, just things that we may actually use. Uh, other things we might turn off or leave off. But like right to left, we really don't need that or left to right. That's not an option that we need unless you're building a site that requires it and go ahead and turn it on. Um, now, I'm just going to go through here really quickly and we're not going to cover what all these do because most of them are pretty self-explanatory. So there's really no reason to talk about them. So I'm just going to take a quick minute here and add these. All right, once you have all of the options selected that you want to use for your WYSIWYG editor, there's one other thing that we really should do before we click save on that, and it's the CSS tab here. We don't want to use the same CSS that is on our site for the back end, so whatever we do in our CSS when we go to theme this site, it will affect this editor's output as well. I usually just like to use the editor default CSS. It makes sure that the text within the text box as you're editing, not once you click save, but as you're editing, looks the same as it always has. Um, sometimes if you define like small fonts for a particular section of your website, you don't really want your editor to also have very small fonts because people can easily uh, misspell something and not realize it because the text is so small. They may format something incorrectly. Uh, so I just use the editor default CSS so that it always stays consistent across the site and then let the styles handle it for once they click save. So we're going to click save on this. The other thing that you're going to want to do uh, once this saves is also add the CK editor to the filtered HTML option. And this will just allow that to also use the WYSIWYG profile. I'm not going to go through how all of that works right now. Um, I'll add it 
later in between videos, but you can go ahead and just click CK Editor here and also add the options for that. So now that that is saved, we can close this down. And if we click edit here on this page and scroll down here and change this to full HTML, you can see that our WYSIWYG editor is now applied to this content region. We can select areas of the content and make them bold. We can select other areas and make them italics. And we can also change the styles here. Maybe we want to make this a heading or maybe we want the font size or the font family to be something other than what it was, changing sizes and styles. Um, so this has now just given us a very nice WYSIWYG editor to insert tables, undo, indent, and it's much more versatile and user-friendly. And then when we come down here and click save, we can see that that is now reflected in our site. Now, what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about moving that uh, text format up, if you notice right here, this was set to filtered HTML, which did not give us our WYSIWYG editor currently because I didn't set it up, and that's why I, I had you set that up as well. But um, it's not defaulting there because we currently didn't have it set to default. So we moved it up and that should make it default for your, uh, your site from here on out. It's just because this one was already posted, so it didn't default to it. It defaulted to what was set up previously. So that's how you get a WYSIWYG editor rolling on your website. So now you can go back through all of the articles you created and kind of maybe play around with the text formats and style it up really the way that you want. Now there is one thing that I have had a lot of questions on in the past and that is simply how do you break this down to a new line? Because if I simply hit ed enter in this editor, it's going to do a paragraph break and you may have not wanted to break the paragraph, you have you maybe just wanted to break the line. And I've had a lot of clients that I've worked with in the past ask, how do you do that? Because it is a feature that a lot of people need to do. Maybe you're listing off a couple of items and you don't want them in different paragraphs. You just want them on different lines. And it's really simple. Just hold shift and click enter and that will break you onto a new line. So I didn't want to forget to let you know about that because it can be extremely frustrating when you're trying to just drop down to the next line and enter keeps double breaking you. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you real quick before we close out this video. So if you like this episode, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next episode where we start talking taxonomy. See you guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.